What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to have a different kind of conversation. During the Great Depression, pulp fiction writers became millionaires. Let me say this again. They were selling pulp fiction novels for a nickel apiece. And a nickel apiece, these guys got rich during the Great Depression. Now, why did they get rich? They were providing entertainment during very hard times. So, what lessons can we pull from that? And we're gonna be talking about that in a whole lot episode more. of the Institute. This Economic Thought was brought to you by B-School for Hustlers, where I'm going to teach you how to create intellectual property. The launch of the Intellectual Property School is gonna happen in less than two weeks. And what you're going to do is learn how to do what I do. The title of this video is very much reminiscent of what I did during the last recession. I started this YouTube channel and I wrote a book and that book made me a millionaire. And also, I write books, I create YouTube content, I create podcast, podcast content, I create online courses. Those four things have provided me a ton of money and in the intellectual property school, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do what I do. Now, first of all, I need to put a disclaimer. You're not gonna make the kind of money that I'm making. I'm just not going to lie to you or set you up. The expected income that you can make within six months to 12 months is five to $15,000 per month. That's where you're gonna be. When I came to the YouTube space, I was already a seasoned business owner. There were many things I knew how to do, and I'll teach you that in the intellectual property school, but to keep your expectations in line, with, because this is the thing, this isn't fast money. This isn't like flipping something on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. This is gonna take a dedicated and concentrated effort on your part to become financially successful with your content creation business. And I'm gonna give it to you straight, but this is a business that you can build and you can do when you get old. So you don't like, Let's say you're 50 years old and you just get started. You could do this business for the next 20 years kind of easily. Even if you're old, even if you're in bad health, you can do this business because from a physical effort standpoint, it doesn't take a lot. So the link is below. Go ahead and what I'm doing is giving you 65% off of the Intellectual Property School if you go ahead and get in now. And I'm also going to make home economics available to everyone who enrolls in the intellectual property school during this period because home economics is a foundational course for everything I do. So go ahead, go below and enroll in the intellectual property school. All right, so let's get into it. Why did these writers make so much money? And this is something that I need to talk about from a writing standpoint. If you didn't know, I'm a writer. I haven't written much in the last four or five years, but that's how I got started. And I wrote my book, Making Money A to Z with self storage and auctions. And I created Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. And I created the porn is always in the DVD player. So I created a lot of books and that's how I got started with content creation. And that's what these uh, Pulp Fiction writers were doing during the Great Depression. Here's the thing. A recession is an opportunity for you to make money depending on how you are positioned. That is very, very important. How you're positioned in terms of setting up yourself for income. And these Pulp Fiction writers, 
they would write really, really fast. You had some people who could write a Pulp Fiction novel in a week. And this, these guys were beast because they were doing this on a typewriter. And many of you have never even seen a typewriter alone. And this was this device with keys on it and they were hit it and they would write these books and put a sheet of paper in there and write these books. What that meant, they, they knew how to spell. They had to have um, command of the English language. Uh, there were so many things, there were so many skill sets that they had to have to become a writer. And some of these guys could type really, really fast, like 120 words per minute. So these guys were lyrical literature beast in terms of production and ideals. Isaac Asimov, there, there were so many of these guys. So your opportunity, and this is an opportunity for people <coughs> who are willing to roll up their sleeves and go to work because during this recession, and let's talk about income velocity. This is why you don't see me doing any videos talking about how inflation is kicking my butt because it's not. I mean, I spent a lot of money this week. Uh, I was buying Bluetooth speakers. I was, um, I was doing a lot of stuff this week. I was um, getting stuff for the podcast. Also, the podcast is going to drop either later on tonight or Monday morning. I haven't quite decided because I want to start off because there's six episodes that are done. And like, I have been consuming podcast tutorials for the last three weeks. And this is one of the things I'm going to teach you because one of the things you need to do before you start write a book is have an outline, start a YouTube channel, know what you're going to talk about. And this is a tip from me to you. If you're gonna start a YouTube channel, you should come up with 25 YouTube video ideas before you produce your first video. Because this is where people get lost. And I see it all the time. They'll produce a few videos, then they won't make a video for two, three, four, five weeks. The YouTube algorithm is predicated on consistent uploads. Um, there, were, there, there are some people who can create seriously evergreen content uh, even Kevin Samuel's channel is starting to degrade. So, and Kevin had like a lot of viewers, a lot of engagement. And you go to Social Blade, you will see that it's dropping. And as we go on, it's going to get to the point where he, he's not going to be getting any views on that channel because that's how the YouTube algorithm, there was a guy who was named uh, Nate with Channel Makers. And he, he did a video talking about mental health, like he had gotten burnt out and he had to take a break. This is the thing with YouTube. Notice that I have not disappeared other than when I had my heart attack or when I got sick. And one of the reasons that I can make so much content consistently across multiple channels and not get burnt out is, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I don't work eight hour, 12 hour days. I don't. I might work a two to four hour day and I'll take the rest of the day off. I may go out and have lunch. I may hang out with my girlfriend. I may watch TV. I have not worked a 40 something hour a week since I got out the car rental business. And that, that was something that I really, really hated about that business is it took away my freedom. Like, you know, I've been working a little harder because I wanted to get these podcast episodes up, but I typically have had weeks where I have worked 10 hours, literally 10 hours of work. So because I am not consistently putting in 50, 60, 80 hour work weeks, I don't get burned out because I'm pacing myself. I mean, a lot of y'all don't know that. They're like, literally tomorrow I'm taking off. Um, I'm taking off because uh, it's already planned. So this is one of the things I'm going to teach you how not to burn yourself out because I have consistently may have been making content other than when I had a heart attack and when I got sick on YouTube for 13 years. 
that's a lot of content. And I'm gonna teach you how to pace yourself because the thing is, you don't wanna get to the point, because this, this is something else that I've noticed, that there are very few YouTubers who are still around when I started. There are very few, there's like uh, Philip DeMarco, I Justine, uh, there's literally a handful of YouTubers who are still around when I started on YouTube. And the thing is, YouTube burnout is a big thing because what people do is they wanna make it their full-time career, they, they go crazy, they make all this content, they go to all these events, they hang around all these YouTubers, and they literally burn out because they're not feeding themselves. And this is one of the things, like, I consistently feed myself new ideals. I'm gonna teach you how to do that because one of the things is that you don't wanna get into um, this treadmill of creating content without giving you, like, I'm going to the Bahamas August. Um, once again, I give myself breaks and I treat myself well. And this is one of the reasons I eat out every day because I don't have to worry about washing dishes, even though I have a dishwasher. Uh, the way that I have this thing set up, it is designed to keep me consistent. And I can teach you that because I have seen it. I've seen so many YouTube creators burn out because they, because here's the thing. Once you get a taste, a little taste of the content money, let's call it the content money, where you can be at home and make a lot of money. It's addictive. I mean, my YouTube AdSense on this channel is trending toward $10,000 this month. And my other channel, B-School for, well, not B-School, uh, Glendon Cameron School is gonna do about 1,500. And other channels, I haven't really posted that much on them. And honestly, I'm about to share something with you. I think I said this before, but I was watching some YouTube content and they had a data scientist on here. And what this data scientist said backed up something that I've been telling men for years, regardless of what you look like. They were, you know, they did research on this. It's like, what happens when a one messages a 10 on the dating app? That one has a 14% chance of success. And the data scientist was so shocked because he thought he had zero chance. So this is a 14% success rate on a dating app, even if you're ugly, okay? Now, if you hop off the dating apps and you start approaching hot women in public, that goes up to 30%. This is why you see guys who are ugly because they've already figured this out. And I've been telling men that for years and men, here, here's the thing. I, I do a lot of research on audiences and demographics and the men of today are weak and moist and they don't want to work. They won't, don't want to put forth any effort and they want the same accouterments that someone such as myself have. I'm successful, I make a lot of money, I live a luxurious lifestyle. They want same access to the kind of chicks I can get being a bum. And I am pretty much thinking about repurposing that channel and making a motivational channel because I can consistently tell you guys what works and most guys because they this is the youtube and once again i study if i wanted a U, male youtube channel to be successful all i had to do is talk bad about women darius m better bachelor uh entrepreneur with cars all they do is talk bad about women their crazy expectations that's all they do and it's an echo chamber for mediocrity instead of saying hey i have a problem Al Green had a song many years ago. I am so tired of being lonely. And that is the case with many men today. But instead of going ahead and trying to do something about it, what they seek are echo chambers where they can bitch and moan about being lonely versus actually doing something about it. So with the success of my business courses, I'm pretty much going to leave that alone because the men 
don't want to take action. They just don't. There's some, there's some men, but you know, once again, th this is something I've learned and I'm pretty much probably gonna repurpose that channel because all men wanna do is bitch and whine, moan and complain about women. And here's the thing, women are not complicated at all. Not complicated at all. Not even close to complicated. But many men have allowed their inner bitch to dominate and take over. So when they approach women with a feminine presentation, they immediately repel women. And this is why the masculine dominant position works so well, because you are enter the room with dominant energy and it activates her female energy. But most of you guys are so lost. So I'm pretty much probably going to move away that and double down on business and finance because even though I give you stuff that works and I was really surprised to see that something I've been telling men because I will approach a bad bitch in a heartbeat. I feel like I got a shot. And a lot of times I would say my success rate is about 80 percent, 80 percent of the women I go after I get. So that 20 percent, they crazy. They missing out. They don't like the merchandise. I only worry about them. But a lot of guys are so much into this weak, moist position. And this is one of the reasons I get so much hate, because when I talk about my life, because once again, to quote the great Michael Jordan, it ain't bragging if you've done it. It's bragging if you haven't done it. And I talk about things I have done and a lot of you get triggered because you haven't done shit in your pathetic, weak ass, moist little life. And here's something. Here's a news flash for you guys. The next 10 years are going to be really, really hard for you. You think it's bad now? It's going to get worse because you ain't doing shit to improve your situation. And this is one of the reasons that I'm speaking so rough and rugged to you guys is if you want to enroll in the intellectual property school and learn how to make money with content, it is not fast money. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to run tiny experiments. You're going to have to try this. You're going to have to try this. But I can tell you when that YouTube check hits like this month, I'm trending toward um, probably ten to twelve thousand dollars between these two channels. And that money is going to hit July 21st. And when that YouTube money hits, it's nice. It's nice. It's real nice. And one of the things I'm going to do is focus on growing that YouTube revenue as well as growing. This is one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast because I'm in a position because I'm going to tell you once again, my business instincts are so razor sharp. And they're so on point. I decided not to do a video podcast. If you know this, video podcasts are all the rage right now. Fresh and Fit, the Joe, Mor Joe Rogan Experience. Everyone comes up, they go ahead and get a nice studio, they get a nice logo, they get their microphones, and they bring guests on and they start talking, right? I decided not to do a video podcast for various reasons, because I've had a podcast before. And I didn't do a video. Uh, once again, I'm not going to put the podcast on the YouTube channel. And I was watching Pat Flynn, the godfather of podcast. He had a video warning about creating a video podcast. And many of the things that I thought he articulated. This is the godfather of podcasting. And I'm like, because one of the things is if I go ahead and create a YouTube podcast what reason is it for you to go to my podcast site because it's here on youtube and also he says something else because uh i don't consume a lot of video podcasts because i think most of them are boring and he brought that up that you know someone's going to watch an hour-long video podcast he said probably not if it's not visually compelling it's just not and um I agree. And that's one of the reasons I am not going to do a video podcast. Now, what I might do is 
do a video announcing a new podcast episode, I may do that because I want to get you to the podcast website. I want to grow that revenue stream. So, you know, once again, my business acumen and my business insights are so on spot because once again, I told you guys, get off the dating apps and start approaching women. This is something that has been backed up by analytical hard data that your success rate will go up, but most men are weak. And I'm not trying to be funny or dismissive. Most of you motherfuckers are just weak. And with business, and this is one of the things because I'm gonna have people, I'm gonna have students who are gonna enroll in the intellectual property school and they're gonna have a firm understanding because one, number one, I'm not gonna lie to you and say you're gonna make the kind of money I make. I'm gonna explain to you why I make the kind of money that I make. It took me 10 years of work and experience to create that first digital product. That first digital product that made $2.2 million. It took me 10 years to get the wisdoms, the insights, the experience. I know when I wrote that book, I knew storage units inside and out. And I had one jackass leave this comment on there like, the book didn't help me. And the book is so easy to read. It's such a guy that tells you from A to Z how to buy units, or at the time, because most storage units are now, most storage auctions are online, and I don't know anything about that. So the book will not help you with how to buy a storage unit online, which I think you, you put yourself in a position to be ganked. But I'm gonna have some students who are gonna hit it out the park because I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that you're gonna make money really quickly. And I'm gonna have people who have some money, you're gonna have to have some money to participate in the intellectual property school. Are you gonna need a lot of money? No, uh, you can build your content production business for less than $2,000 easy. If you already have some stuff, like let me explain, that camera and lens is $6,000. This camera and lens is $5,000. Um, I probably, and once again, this is my choice. You don't have to buy this kind of equipment, but as I went ahead and grew, I invested in my business. So let's say these two cameras, 11,000, the iMac Pro. Once again, you don't need an iMac Pro to process videos. I thought it would make a difference, but it didn't. That was 13,000, then I have the MacBook Pro. So I've got about $30,000 in between video and uh, audio and podcasting equipment, about $30,000. You can start a content creation business easy for, you don't have to have these kind of cameras. I got these cameras because there's a certain look there's a certain feel, there's a certain way that I like my presentation to be. But you don't have to do that. You can literally start with your camera phone just to get started and invest over time. I didn't buy all this stuff like from day one. Uh, honestly, I did not really invest in my content creation business for about two years. I just started with a camera and until YouTube changed the format, there used to be these black bars on the side of my YouTube videos because I was shooting in standard definition and I didn't even know that I had to shoot in high definition. High definition is 720, 1080p, 4K, 6K, and 8K. I didn't know that. I mean, I still made millions of dollars. So I'm gonna teach you guys, you know, and I've had some people, all right, let's go ahead and talk about this. I have a lot of people who's like, who want to talk to me? Let me tell you a little story. Years and years ago, when I was selling the storage auction book for $19.99, I used to talk to people. And I was on the phone talking with a guy for three hours, and he did not buy my $19.99 ebook. He didn't buy it. And I talked to him for three hours. In the year in 2020, when I made $3 million, I talked to no one. Lesson that I've learned. If you want to like talk to me and message me and ask me a bunch of fucking questions, more than likely you're not going to buy. I have the statistical data that there's a 90 something percent chance that you're not going to buy if you want to ask me all these dumbass questions because you're not serious. I've literally had people put millions of dollars in my pocket 
without ever talking to me. So that's why, you know, I, I see it all the time. It's like, how do I get in contact with you? How do I talk to you? Uh, this is how you get in contact with me. Enroll in a course and you get to ask your questions and talk to me when I do a live training. That's how you get to talk to me. I am not gonna talk to you. I'm not gonna make it easy for you to contact me because I know that people with a whole bunch of questions, a lot of questions, ain't gonna buy shit. And I have the statistical data, I have the experience. The more questions that a customer asks, the more likely they're not gonna buy. Like um, when I was selling cars, I had this one guy, he had all these questions, he came back three times, and the third time I say, hey, have a nice day, because I knew he wasn't gonna buy it. He had too many questions, he, he was just poking and prodding, and I was like, ah. And literally, I've had white people, and this is black folks, I had white people come look at the car, 30 minutes later, money has exchanged hands and they're driving off so i know a lot of you want to talk to me and let's kind of go back to another reason that my consulting fee is 2500 and i'm gonna tell you why it's that i hate consulting you know why i hate consulting because i get a lot of people who want to just talk i don't get people who are going to do anything so when i moved it up to 2500 someone who pays me 2500 self-qualifies because they number one they have the 2500 more likely have a business more likely it's going to be a productive conversation i don't want to talk to you for 200 bucks an hour i don't want to talk to you for 500 bucks an hour. i don't want to talk to you for a thousand bucks an hour because i you know once again what i tell you i don't work that much i don't work that much last week was a last week was probably a 40 50 hour week because I was working on the project and I will do that temporarily. And then I will default back because like once I go ahead and get these episodes up because I had to research podcasting and I'm really glad that I did the research, I watched the videos because there's so many things I didn't know. And you know, this is what's funny. Podcasting is a big, big thing. And there is a lot of accurate, helpful, information on YouTube about podcasting. But when you compare and contrast the information about renting cars on Toro and hire car, the difference between the information that the people put down for podcasting, is night and day. The information for podcasting, like Pat Flynn, he validated some concepts that I had even before I watched that video. But with the car rental business, and it's just bullshit, just complete another bullshit. So, I will say that about uh, three months, about a month from now, I will be in the position to teach you how to start a successful podcast because one of the things is I enjoy this. And another reason that I'm not going to do a video podcast is I'm 55 years old and I remember when I was a kid, and some of you who are older will remember this, they used to show black and white movies on television. And radio, radio was such a big thing. And there were people, Wolfman Jack, Casey Kasem, these people created tremendous radio businesses. Neil Bortz, Lim, Rush Limbaugh. So I know that if I make my podcast interesting and creative and easy to listen to, that that's a business within to itself. And there was a guy, Neil Sedakis, he had an interesting podcast where he was telling these funny ass stories. So I know, cause from the golden age of radio and you know, like the first 10 episodes are gonna be just straight business business. And then I have layers cause I, I've got this uh, podcasting console and I'm gonna start putting sound effects, you know, and th this is something I learned from the first time that I, I was doing podcasting. When the camera's on me, like y'all notice everything. If my nose hair is too long, y'all notice that. If I got book, y'all notice that. If I got crust under my eyes, y'all notice that. So it kind of puts me on when I'm in front of the camera. I know that I have to go wash my face. Like this morning I got up, I took a shower, I shaved, brushed my teeth. But with podcasting, I'm a, I'm a little bit, I'm more freer because I don't, I can only focus on what I'm saying I don't have to focus on what I'm saying and how I look. That's, so there's gonna be a lot that I'm gonna try, I'm gonna teach you guys about the content business. And once again, the content creation business is not fast money, but it can be residual money. And what do I mean by that? 
I've got YouTube videos that I've produced five, six years ago that are making me money. And if you get enough of them, that can be somewhat of a form of passive income because those videos are making money and I have I made those videos once. And that's, that's one of the things that I love about the content creation business. You create a, you write a book once, it makes money for years. You create an online course once, it makes money for years. You create a YouTube video once, it makes money for years. You create a podcast once, it makes money for years. So from that standpoint, you can create a lot of money in terms, but once again, it's not gonna be fast money. And I have to keep saying that because I don't want someone to jump into the course and then expect to be making money immediately. It's not like flipping or something on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, it's nothing like that. But from a financial standpoint, you can make more money with content creation than you can make with cryptocurrency. Let me say that again. You can make more money with content creation than you can make with cryptocurrency. The year that I did $3 million, I out, that was, I mean, like it, my investment at the time, I was spending, and most of that was my assistant's salary, about 4,000 a month. to make 250,000 a month. So, you know, all you crypto bros, like crypto, 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 crypto. Uh, I'm not impressed with your crypto gains because my gains, see your crypto gains ain't loyal. Bitcoin is down. Bitcoin is down this morning and Bitcoin is probably gonna hit 20 to 15,000 in a matter of weeks. While at that point, I'll be making more money than you crypto bros sitting at home, hoping and wishing for, and this is another thing, with content creation, you have control. Crypto, you don't have control. Stock market, you don't have control. Real estate, you kind of have a little control, but you don't know what the overall market's gonna do. So with content creation, you're 100% in the driver's seat. Hello? You're 100% in the driver's seat. It's like, if you're doing some shit that ain't working, it ain't working, stop doing it. And then do some shit that works, right? But once again, there were people getting rich during the Great Recession. And I feel that, and this is one of the reasons you wanna act now. Um, you have about 10 years before I feel that YouTube's gonna max out. Like right now, you can start a YouTube channel and be found in organic search. That's still a thing here on YouTube that literally people can find you through organic search. I feel 10 years in the future, it's not gonna be like that. I already see that some niches are already petering out like the credit card review niche. I see a lot of people trying to start the credit card review niche and they don't get views because there's just so many people talking about the points and all this other stuff. And honestly, I'm not really using my credit cards for points. I'm using cash back. Uh, I just got another credit card, gets 2% cash back. That's my jam right now, because I'm not traveling. But once I start traveling, I will go ahead and get the American Express cards back and then move my spend over to that, because right now my spend is pretty low compared to what it used to be used to be when I was running YouTube ads, I was spending about 80, $90,000 a month. And that's a lot of spend and that's a lot of points. And at some point, once I go ahead and get the first version of the intellectual property school set up, and at some point I will start running ads for YouTube for that, because this is something that's trendy that a lot of people will want to do or be interested in. And I can teach you how to make five to $15,000 per month consistently with a small YouTube channel. And that's great because everyone is trying to build a YouTube channel and then they're trying to get as many subscribers and many as views as possible. And I can tell you by starting a focused niche YouTube channel, you can make way more money, way faster than waiting on YouTube. Because honestly, I don't ever feel that this channel will get a million subscribers. I don't think so. 
It might, I don't know, but um, I don't need it to have a million subscribers for me to make millions of dollars. And that's what I'm focused on. And that's one of the things that I, I figured out really quickly. I will focus on what made money because one of the things I do actually hurts my YouTube channel. Sending traffic off the platform, that hurts your YouTube channel. When you send someone to your landing page or your online course, that hurts your channel. So one of the reasons my channel has grown quite a bit is I haven't really been selling anything most of this year. And I'm just recently started and I'm going to do a schematic, <clears throat> which I'll teach you a sequence of how to sell. Because one of the things I'm getting to getting ready to do, and let me know if you like this idea in the comment comments, I'm getting ready to do uh, a training session Friday, just a, hey, this is what's going on. This is what, you know, and asking you, you know, it'll probably be a live stream on Friday talking about what's going on and telling you what I'm doing with the course and updating you. And then the rest of the week will be the normal content because this is kind of a departure because I'm making this to introduce the pre-launch of the intellectual property school. And this is something else too. I have learned how to launch these courses really like in the beginning, like I sent out a letter to my email list and I got 10 sales, which was $10,000, which you know how much money I made when I did Hustlers Kung Fu? I made like 1,200, 1,300 bucks when I did that. And that course went on to do a million dollars. So for me to hit my email list and get 10 sales instantly, that's a great sign. So I feel that the intellectual property school is probably gonna outpace Glendon Cameron School. And I'm kind of thinking about pairing the two. Like if you enroll in intellectual property school, you will automatically get the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu. Because I'm thinking about doing that. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more sense it makes because creating content is one lesson plan, okay? And business skills is another lesson plan. Because if you sign up for the pre-launch and everyone that signs up for the intellectual property school is going to get uh, access to home economics because it just makes sense because that's the foundational course for everything that I do. So the links below, go ahead and get into it because it's going to be fun. And if you're looking for a way to make money, once again, you're not quitting your job. All right, let's just, let's go ahead. You're not quitting your job in no time soon. But I want you to think, I want you to think a year from now. You've got a YouTube channel, maybe a podcast, you're doing content creation, and now you have an additional, let's just, let's, let's, additional $3,000 a month coming in. Just 3,000, which is uh, $36,000 a year, and you've got your job. And you've got your YouTube business set up where you can do it and do your job and not burn yourself out. What would an additional, right now, where you are financially, what would an additional $3,000 per month do for your life? Put that in the comments. So go ahead, enroll in the Intellectual Property School, and I will scream at you guys later.